And so to have understanding grounded in one's experience means there has to be a certain silence. Because only in silence do we have the stability to look very closely at our own experience. That's the usefulness of silence. As I said, the usefulness of silence is not to get caught in trying to perfect a meditative state. That's not a useful way of thinking of meditation or silence. It's so that there is a ground. In silence there becomes a great clarity. The more quiet you are, the more clear you are. Because the mind isn't running quite so amok. And in that silence, the inquiry then has power, right? A question has power. In silence, a question has great power. Because in silence, the question will always lead you deeper into your experience. If there's no grounding in, in silence, a spiritual question is going to lead you into your mind. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Well, let me think about it. And you're immediately up in the mind, right? What is life? Well, I don't know. Let me consult some experts. Or whatever, right? It, it, if there's no grounding in silence, it very easily goes into the mind. Or even worse than all that is so-and-so said, right? Who am I really? Well, Ramana said, da 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 But you see, if you don't actually know if it's true or not, what does it matter what Ramana said? If you don't know what's, if it's true or not, then what Ramana or Jesus or Buddha said, it, it has no connection to one's experience. So that's the, that's the link, is connecting it to one's experience. So that even the spiritual question has to be grounded in silence. Otherwise it's too chaotic. Otherwise you're dropping a question into a very chaotic inner environment. And when there is a certain capacity for stillness, which brings a clarity and an energy. Then there can be looking inside. Is there a separate self? Is there actually there? This thing called me, does it actually exist in experience? Of course it exists in most people in their thought process. And then their thought process duplicates their thinking into their feeling. Right? You feel what you think, and so on. And yet when one actually looks, is that separate self, the separate self that seems to be so problematic, right? Even the one that the separate self that's trying to become free, enlightened, God realized, what have you. Does it actually have any existence outside of thought? And once you start to see that it doesn't, and anybody can see that if they want to see it, if you're open to seeing it, then you will see it because it's as clear as the sun in the noon sky. It's not complicated and it's not theoretical. It's very simple and practical and obvious. If you want to see it, then you will see it. You will see that the whole, your whole sense of self, this whole idea of a separate somebody, and a separate something is only thought. And behind that thought, there isn't anything there. There's just the awareness that it's all thought, that it's all self-image. Mm -hmm. That moment may bring a realization or awakening, or it may bring an understanding. If it brings the understanding, then there can be stopping in what is seen. Because that is what provides the, the necessary link or the necessary energy to stop, oh, there's nobody there. That's understanding. 
But the link to experience would then be, what's it like? What's the experience like? What does it feel like to, real, to, to understand that? How is it felt in the body? How is it felt in the mind? What's the actual experience of nobody, no separate somebody there? And then we're starting to move more deeply into experience. Oh, well the experience of there not actually being a separate somebody there is very open, very spacious, very aware. It is brimming with awareness, brimming with consciousness. To the mind, it doesn't make sense because the mind is conditioned to think somebody's got to be aware. There's always an entity that's conscious. That's the conditioning of the mind. But direct observation shows that that's a fallacy. That the consciousness is there, but that which is conscious is not a me. And so stopping there, because see, one has to have a capacity to be quiet, to be still, so you can stop right there, right at the edge, because you're right at the edge of the infinite. You're literally right at the edge of the realization. The understanding takes you to the edge of mind, to the boundary, the frontier of mind. And to sort of start pushing beyond the boundary of mind, I don't actually mean pushing as in striving, but to start to move beyond the boundary of mind, there has to be the willingness to experience what is understood, what is seen. What is it like to not find a separate somebody there? What's the experience of it? And that question is not meant to bring you into the mind again, but to actually reground you in being, in experience. So you're literally feeling, what does it feel like? What does it feel like to sit in a room like this, right here, right now? For those of you who have the understanding, with a certain understanding that what's looking out through your eyes, what's listening through your ears, what's sensing through your senses isn't a someone or a something. What's the experience of it? What's it like? And this starts to be the link between understanding and realization. Again, never misunderstand. There's, realization will only and can only come spontaneously. You can't fake it. That's the nice thing about it. Well, you can fake it, but... You can't, you, you, but you can only convince yourself. <laughs> you can't fake the, tr the truth to the truth. And this goes true for any and all uh, spiritual inquiry, meditative inquiry is that it has to be grounded in number one experience and a certain stillness, a certain stillness of mind. I don't mean that your thought processes have to come to a complete stop. I mean that your, your attention has to be more on experience than it has, is on thinking. Because even in this very simple inquiry, very simple question, which is the pivotal question, which is why I always return to it constantly, constantly, constantly. Everything hinges on this self that most human beings take themselves to be. The formula is very simple. No self, no problem. 